it's not the end, it's only the beginning. You know, I can't remember if I read that in a book or saw it in a film, but we've come to the beginning, the beginning of a new year and a new decade. So I thought I'd look back on some nice new stories in 2019 that really, really gave us the feel-good factor. Don't forget the links to all of the stories I'm going to discuss today can be found in the details below. You might notice it's a little sunny where I am. And that's because I'm lucky enough to be on the island they call the Gem of the Caribbean, the beautiful island of Barbados and the place I call my other home. I'm in the north of the island, which is where my family's from. I'm in Spitestown at a fabulous beach bar and restaurant called 111 East. And best of all, apart from the good cocktails and the good food, is this view. So let me ask you something. Did you do a dry January? Hands up, confession, I did not. But I should have done. If you did, then congratulations, because study shows that if you stick with a dry January, you're more likely to be drinking less in August. That's true, in August. Not only that, but you'll lose some weight, you'll have more energy, and if you're a smoker and a drinker, you'll cut down on your drinking, and you may even manage to stop smoking. Last February, we featured heavyweight boxing champion Tyson Fury, AKA the Gypsy King. He's been very open about his struggles with his drug addiction and mental health issues. Um, you may remember that that year he won a fight and donated his entire nine million purse to several UK charities that provide housing for recovering alcoholics and addicts. He said he's not doing it for a pat on the back, he's just doing it to help people. And you may know that he had another fight this month where he conclusively beat Deontay Wilder. So it'd be interesting to see what he does with some of that prize money this time round. So in March, we moved to the US and I told you about a good Samaritan called Dietrich McGowan, who on a bitterly cold day spent over $500 buying an entire stock of Girl Scout, Scout cookies so the troop could escape the bad weather. Initially, he bought seven boxes of cookies and told them to keep the change, but then the Good Samaritan came back and bought the whole lot, just so the girls could get out of the cold. As I said, links to all of these stories are in the details below. Now, staying in the US, in April we featured two schools who decided to do things a little differently when it came to detention. They replaced it with meditation. Both schools realized that traditional detention methods simply weren't working, so they created mindful moments rooms and hired yoga teachers to help misbehaving students. Swapping detention for meditation and yoga classes has shown spectacular results. There was an improvement in the pupils' interactions with their classmates and with teachers, and some of these children even showed an improvement in their schoolwork. Um. Let's head back to the UK where last summer London was designated the world's first garden city, which stands to reason as nearly 50% of London is green space. So please, Londoners, get out there, go and explore, enjoy Mother Nature, because as we've told you so many times here on Nice News, hanging out with Mother Nature <laughs> is so very good for you. The merry month of May was a good month if you were a graduating student at Morehouse College in America. That's because billionaire investor Robert F. Smith repaid the student loans of every single one of the 2019 graduating class. And if that wasn't enough of a good deed, Robert then created the Intern X program, which provides paid summer internships to students from ethnically underrepresented groups. And all Robert has asked is that everybody who has benefited from his generosity pay it forward. I think that's a good ask. On previous editions of the show, we've spoken about the detrimental impact loneliness can have, particularly among the elderly. Studies have shown that chronic loneliness can actually shorten a lifespan. So in August, we featured Avon and Somerset Police Department, who, along with the senior citizens liaison team, introduced a number of happy to chat benches in public spaces, which encourage people, strangers or not, to sit down and have a natter. I'm on this beach by myself, but that's okay. 
Dr. Jean-Jacques Mouembe is my September hero. I'm not the only one who's impressed by him. New African Magazine has named him one of the top 100 most influential Africans. He's a native of Congo and has dedicated close to 40 years of his life researching Ebola. And in September, he announced that he and his team had created a new Ebola treatment, which has proven effective in curing 90% of patients when symptoms are reported early. He describes the discovery as the achievement of a lifetime, and I totally, totally agree. So now we're in October and Black History Month, and there was just an embarrassment of riches when it came to deciding which stories I was going to remember. There was Tyler Perry. He was the first and only black man to own a major movie studio in the United States. Then there's Jessica Nabongo, who was the first black woman to visit every single country in the world. Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed gets a mention. He won the Nobel Peace Prize. Simone Biles became the world's most decorated gymnast. And that's why I can't just pick one story in October. Remember, the links to these stories can be found in the details below. And once again, thank you to 111 East in Spice Town for letting me borrow your gorgeous venue. And as the year came to an end, women of African descent were being crowned. And I mean that most literally, because the holders of all of the major beauty pageant titles, Miss Universe, Miss World, Miss USA, Miss Teen USA, and Miss America, were all Nubian queens. So that old saying of black being beautiful really is very true. So we've come to the end of the recap. Um, we're in a new year and a new decade. On behalf of everyone here on the Nice News team, we would like to say from the bottom of our hearts, thank you, thank you, thank you so very much. Thank you for the love, thank you for the support, thank you for the suggestions, thank you for everything. I would also like to thank 111 East in Spitestown, Barbados for this beautiful venue that they've allowed me to use so very graciously. Um, Thank you to Barbados. We've got a thing called We Gathering. We're encouraging everybody to come back to the island. They featured St. Lucie and St. Peter, and I was here for both of those. Um, thank you for Spice Town for holding this beautiful event. Most of all, thank you, everybody. We're going to be back soon with more nice news, so please stay with us. We look forward to seeing you soon and sharing more nice news. And remember, Mother Nature is the best therapy. Look at this view. Just look at it.